11 with me tonight, please. Hebrews chapter number 11. The apostle writes to us in verse number 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead. Yet speaketh. Father, bless your holy word tonight, Lord. I ask for unction. I ask for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Lord, simply a vessel in your hands. Be glorified tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You can be seated. The 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews probably take a month to preach through this. And you probably preach longer than that. It's loaded. It's a powerful book. Of course, all the scripture is powerful. But this is one powerful chapter. It's called the chapter of faith, the 11th chapter of Hebrews. I've preached out of it many times down through the years, been blessed many times. I read the book of Hebrews all the time, time and time and time again. I've gone through the book of Hebrews, and every time I go through it, God's got something for me. He helps me from his holy word. Here in Hebrews chapter number 11, I'll talk to you tonight about what faith does. Just a few passages. I want you to notice in verse number 4. The scripture says, he being dead, yet speaketh. Faith speaks, my dear friend. It speaks. It speaks in the lives of those who believe, who are true believers in our Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you have a mother, you have a father, you have an aunt or an uncle, a pastor, a Sunday school teacher, someone that has witnessed to you and impressed you, made an impression on your life when you were younger. And that's with you today. It'll stick with you for the rest of your life. You'll never forget it. So they being dead, yet they still speak. Amen. Of course, when we talk about Abel here and speaking the blood that cries out from the ground, God said, the voice of thy blood crieth to me from the ground. It means that we have innocent blood that's been shed in the sight of God. Somebody's got to give an account for it. Amen. So the book of Hebrews chapter number 11 and verse number 4 says that faith speaks. We're all leaving a testimony behind. Our lives are a written record of who we are and what we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I either leave a good taste in your mouth or a bad taste in your mouth when I'm gone from this earth. I hope and pray that you take that seriously because people are watching your life. Notice chapter number 11 and verse number 5. By faith, Enoch was translated. He should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his testimony, before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Amen. Amen. He pleased the Lord. If you go back and study the book of Genesis, you'll find out that there are two separate bloodlines from Adam. You've got the bloodline of Cain and you've got the bloodline of Seth. And each one of them have an Enoch in their bloodline. If you study that Enoch of Cain, you'll find that he was a city builder. He put his roots down in this world. He dug deep into planet earth because he was of the earth and that was his hope was in the earth and that's as far as he could ever see. But Enoch that came from Seth was altogether different. It was not the earth that he looked at, but he walked with God. When he was 65 years old, he bore a son. His name was Methuselah. That name means that when he is dead, it will be sent. God gave Enoch a prophecy. He became a prophet and a preacher. According to the book of Jude, he prophesied the Lord would come with 10,000s of his saints. He walked with God. Amen. There's nothing greater than that than to walk with God. That will lift you from the cares, the problems, the sorrows, the defeat of this old world for a little while to walk in fellowship with the Lord. So the Bible says that he pleased God. Amen. Now I don't know if anything be said any greater about any of us than that we can please God. Notice what it says in verse number 7. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Note carefully, he moved with fear. Somebody said, well, you to reverence the Lord. You don't have to fear him. No, 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 my dear friend. You ever find out who you're serving and find out my 
the power and the almighty of this one that we serve tonight, you're going to fear him. And that Bible says that fear of the Lord's the beginning of wisdom. It'll move you. It'll change your life. It'll, it'll motivate you. It'll stir your soul to fear God. Fear him rightly. Fear the fact that he could smite me into oblivion in a heartbeat. Yet he's merciful and gracious and gives me grace to live day by day. I want you to notice something it says about this in verse number 7. Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. This is something that shows up again and again and again in the 11th chapter of Hebrews. Things not seen as yet. Faith is able to see the unseeable. Faith is able to look past the problems and look into the future. It can look into the promises of God. Yea, and even see His majesty in glory. Look at chapter number 11 and verse number 1. The scripture says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Look at chapter number 11 and verse number 7 as we just read. He moved because of fear. He was warned of things not seen as yet. And what did Noah do? He built an ark. Look at chapter 11 and verse number 8. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. Amen. I don't have to know where I'm going tomorrow. I just have to know who holds tomorrow. Yay, man. This is the faith of walking in with God. Look at chapter 11 and verse number 10. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. He who, verse number 8, Abraham looked for a city. He was a sojourner. He lived in tents all of his life. He never built a house on this earth. Why? He was a pilgrim and a stranger. He's a type of all of those that are faithful. I am the seed of Abraham tonight. I dwell in a, in a house made with hands, my dear friend, only because I need somewhere to put my body when it rains and when it gets cold because the house that I dwell in is not of this earth. I have accepted in the beloved into the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at chapter 11 and verse number 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. Amen. They were looking into the future from the promise of God. Do you believe in heaven? Do you believe in hell? Do you believe in an afterlife? Do you believe that when you take your breath, last breath on this earth, you're going somewhere? Or do you think you die like a dog? And they just bury your body out here in the ground somewhere and your life was meaningless. Your existence is meaningless. You have no purpose in life. And what, <laughs> what is this globe out here floating around in the, in, the, in the heavens for since it's the only one of its kind? Oh, how they'd like to, like to find another one. Amen? Oh, how they would like to find another one. But there is no other one out there. This is the only one. And on this globe, God will settle the issue of sin and death and redemption and salvation and justification right here on this globe. Amen. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of reward of the reward who is this verse number 24 Moses what did he do preacher he chose to refuse the the wealth the power the esteem of Egypt and he chose to to align himself and identify himself with his brethren and he chose Christ in the sense that he chose that over this world he saw something greater in them than the world had to offer. Look at verse 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Oh boy, if that won't fire up your soul tonight, I don't know what will. Who is invisible? Who is this invisible being? Who is this one that no man has ever seen? Who is this that no man can see? He dwelleth in his own element. He dwells in a place where he's the place. For he doesn't need a place. He's always been before there was a place. And he dwells in his holiness and his righteousness. And Moses saw him who is invisible. When you begin to see like that, it'll do something for you. Change your life. 
Notice chapter number 11 and verse number 8 now. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, note the word obeyed. Did you get this? He obeyed the call. He obeyed the call that God laid on his life. If Abraham had stayed in Ur of the Chaldees, you wouldn't be here tonight in faith. For he's the father of the faithful. It is the, it is the son of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that brought forth the Messiah to this world. When you look at the book of, of, book of Matthew chapter number 1, the Lord Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Amen. 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 Son in the sense that he's the son by faith. Abraham was the promised seed. And Mary was a descendant of Abraham. The father of the Lord Jesus Christ is the Almighty. Amen. But Abraham is through the promise. So the Bible says that he was in verse number 4 obeying the call. Jonah ran from the call. Ran hard from as hard as he could. Paul embraced the call. The Bible says that, uh, that Elijah obeyed the call. And the scripture says that Moses was astonished by the call. For when he saw the bush that was burning, he couldn't figure that out. Because how many bushes have you seen burning lately? I haven't seen any bushes burning, but he did. And when he saw that, he knew that the Almighty was speaking to him, the one that spoke to him back in Egypt, the one who called him from his mother's womb, the one who put him in the house of Pharaoh to raise him. And then when he was of age, he chose God instead of these people. That's the one who called him. Have you heard a call? The Bible said many are called, but few are chosen. There's not a soul in this house tonight that's saved that wasn't called. Every one of us. Coming to me, I hear that call. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly of heart. You shall find rest to your souls. That's a call. That's a call. Come unto me. So he obeyed the call. Now I want you to notice in verse number 5. The scripture says in Hebrews chapter number 11 and verse number 5. Let's go to verse number 10. Hebrews eleven ten. 10. For Abraham looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Now what kind of talk is this, preacher? I mean, 1,900 years before Christ is the time of Abraham, folks. 4,000 years ago. And he's looking for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what. He saw Los Angeles, and he didn't like what he saw. He saw San Francisco, and he rejected it right off the bat. He saw Seattle, Washington, said, nope, that's not the place. He saw Chicago, Illinois. Nope, that's not either. How about New York City? Big Apple up there. Nope, won't work. Amen. Even Babylon. He saw all of it. And the Bible says, they said, why don't you play us the songs of Zion? And they said, how can we play the songs of Zion in a strange land in Babylon? So they hung their harps on the willows. Amen. Babylon likes that music that has power in it, but they could never get it from these people. So he's looking for a city. We'll talk about that city in just a moment. Chapter number 11 and verse number 11, the Bible said, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Now, I don't know what happened between this and between that, but I do know that Sarah's laughing was turned into rejoicing. When she laughed at the promise of God, somewhere between the laughing at the promise of God and receiving the strength to bear a child, her laughing ceased and the rejoicing started. Are you laughing at God tonight? Is this just a big joke? Is all of salvation and Christ and eternity and the cross at Calvary, is that all just a big joke? Or is it true? My dear friend, it is true as sure as you live tonight. And it's nothing to laugh about. They laugh, they mock, the world is full of laughter. They laugh themselves into oblivion. But she believed. And when she did, she started rejoicing. Chapter number 11, verse number 13 of Hebrews. 
Hebrews 11 verse 13. The scripture says these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. And were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Notice carefully, they saw them afar off. Amen. Somewhere down the road, this old boy right here will come to the end of his way. I will cross Jordan. I will go into that land that is beyond this land. I will go into the presence of God. There's not a day that goes by in my life that I don't think about that. And I think about how that I must give an account for the things that are done in the flesh. I have given the account for the call. I answered the call of God to preach. There's no doubt in my mind that that's what God wanted me to do. I've answered the call to pastor a church. I've been here for 42 years. I've answered the call in many other ways to do what God wanted me to do. And I've done that. Have you? The Bible said make your election and calling sure. The Bible said the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Once he lays his hand upon your soul, he lays his hand upon your soul. He's the potter, you're the clay. He might have laid his hand upon your soul to begin with to do a work that God had laid aside for you. But you were marred in his hand. I've seen that happen time and time and time again. What does he do, preacher? He makes it again a new, different piece. He's able to take that which is dead and give it life. He's able to take that which has no shape and give it form. He's able to take that which has no hope and give it hope. He's able to do above and beyond all that you could ask or think. I look afar off, dear friend. When you live to be 72, and we got folks older than that here, I sit around sometimes and I think about the past. My mind goes back 50 years ago in the past, and I think about things that I did. It goes back when I was 17 years old playing basketball at Rule High School. I remember those days. It goes back to boot camp at Paris Island, South Carolina. I remember how I felt when I first got there. I said to myself, self, we done made a big mistake. (laughs) So what did I do? I just tightened my belt and buckled it down and did what I had to do. That's life. You learn things. Some of them you learn easily because somebody can teach you. Some of them you learn the hard way. But my friend, I've got more behind me than I have in front of me. Unless, of course, I live to be 175 like Abraham. But I have more behind me than I have in front of me. So whatever God has in store for me for what time I have left, by the grace of God tonight, I intend to go down. I intend to fight to the end. I intend to carry it out. I intend to be there when God wants to use me. And when he's done with me, I want him to be done with me and take me from this world. Amen. My life is in his hands. I can see afar off. Amen. I want to see Ed Ballou again. I want to see Bob Bevington again. I want to see some of these men again that had an effect on my life. I want to see them again. The Bible says over here in verse number 10 of Hebrews chapter number 11 that Abraham looked for a city which hath foundations whose builder and maker is God. The Lord told his disciples in John chapter number 16, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Then he came back to Thomas with one of the greatest statements of the New Testament. To Thomas he said, I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Amen. Nothing's changed about that. There's only one way, friend. There's only one source of truth. There's only one salvation, one blood atonement. Amen. One redemption, one propitiation, one sacrifice of atonement. Just one. Our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said Abraham looked for a city. 
A man that lived 1,900 years before Christ was looking for a city. Now he said, I'll go and prepare a place for you. The apostle John was caught up into the third heaven in the book of Revelation. And he said, I saw things that were unspeakable when Paul was caught up to the same place. He couldn't tell us about it. But when John was caught up and looked down on this earth, he began to tell us about the things of eternity and tell us about the things of time. And he said, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. A beautiful, beautiful city. A city that is, that is clothed with the glory of God. A city that is unlike any city on this earth. It is the ultimate destination of the saved of God. It is that place the Lord Jesus Christ said, I go to prepare for you. And if I go, I'll come again to receive you into myself. It is called the New Jerusalem. The Apostle Paul said in the book of Galatians, it is the mother of us all. Not earth. If this is your mother, you've never been from above. The new Jerusalem is my mother. And she is free. Amen. Gives to us eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. This new city he's talking about, this glorious city, is the new Jerusalem. It's a beautiful place. There's nothing on this earth like it. It has walls of jasper and streets, jasper, and it has streets of pure transparent gold. It has 12 gates of pearl, and on every one of those gates it has a name of the 12 tribes of Israel. It sits on 12 foundations, and those 12 foundations have the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb written into them. In plainer words, in the future there's going to be a joining together of Israel and the church of God. You can't separate the two. That's our roots. That's where we came from. This Bible right here is a Jewish Bible. I want you to remember that the next time you're listening to some anti-Semitic nutball. This is a Jewish Bible. And you can be thankful to God for it. Amen. So he unites together in that place. It's a beautiful place. The Bible says that it hath no need of the sun. For the Lord Jesus Christ and the Father are the light of it. A beautiful, wondrous light. In plain words, we're children of the light and we're going to the light. Amen. No darkness, no shadows, no suffering, no pain. He said... This new Jerusalem that in the former things are passed away. Then he said there is no more sea. This new Jerusalem, you can call it heaven, but you can call it this for certain. It is the abode of the saints of God. We have a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. But I'll tell you right now, my dear friend, I look forward to seeing the Son of God. I want to look on His face. I want to thank Him. I want to fall at His feet. I want to do whatever I'm allowed to do to let Him know. How much I appreciate what he's done for me. Amen. My, in that New Testament, it talks about a woman who washed his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. I hope the tears can flow for my soul, my friend, for what he's done for me. He's done for me what he did for her. He reached down, way down. He reached down deep, deep, deep into the cesspool of sin and took hold of me and pulled me up and I am not what I used to be. I want him to know that. I want to let him know that. I want to praise and bless his holy name. I'm going to where the Lamb of God is. Amen. There to be with him forever. This old stinking hell hole, this land of dying, suffering and sorrow and pain. You'll only be here so much time. It's a temporal abode. But I want you to think about that eternal place, that eternal abode in heaven. That's my home. That's my future. That's my legacy. That's mine. And it can't be taken away from me. Wouldn't it be something when you walk down the streets and there you begin to meet the friends and your family members and you grab them and you hug them and you kiss them and there they're waiting for you. And it's all a day that will never end. The sun will never go down. Forever you live in the land of the living. Amen. Embrace and shout and praise God for what He's done for you. He's got a home, friend. And that home's mine. And I know whom I have believed. I'm persuaded He's able to keep that which I've committed to Him against that day. I got some people up there that I want to hug. I want to kiss them. I want to draw nigh to them. Amen. And I want to find my place around the throne of God. Yes, sir, dear friend. I know that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Praise His holy name. Hunt all you want to on this earth. 
you'll never find that city. Look as you will. Turn over every rock you can find. Search it from one end to the other. You'll never find that city. But oh, how you can look beyond this veil of tears. And there it awaits us. I remember an old saint of God over here at St. Mary's Hospital. Most of you don't know her. But I remember going in to see her one time. And she was about ready to leave. Something had happened to her. She had a look on her face that literally blow your mind. She looked at me and she said, Preacher? I said, yes. She said, let me tell you something. I just saw something. Oh, it's beautiful. There's a city over there, preacher. There's a city. God's been showing me that city now for days. It's beautiful. Preacher, if you could only see it. It's so beautiful. I said to her, you see it because that's your home. That's where you're going. I'm not going yet. But when I get ready to go, he'll let me see that city too. Amen. And I will. Won't you? That's where I'm going. She didn't live long after that. She passed on to be with the Lord. But telling me before she left here, Preacher, if you could only see it, my, how beautiful it is. Boy, you look for a city which have foundations whose builder and maker is God. Father, bless your holy word tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to stand and speak for you. I know who you brought me from. And I bless your righteous name tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Would you stand up with me tonight? We sing an invitation hymn. We just kind of go through this after the services. You don't have to wait till somebody sings an invitation hymn. That's all a formality. You can come anytime you want to. You can come when we open the Bible or you can come when we're up here singing in the choir. You can come on. That altar's open. We have an altar that they don't know anything about anyway that serve the tabernacle. The altar is where you put your foot. It's a holy place Amen. because the one you serve tonight is holy. It's not something man-made. That altar is wherever you're willing to come face to face with your maker. Bless this, Lord. In Jesus' name.